Have you ever needed the perfect image for a project, but you haven't been able to find it? Or it's probably taken hours? Maybe you've gone through loads of different types of uh, commercial stock photo sites or libraries. Today, we're going to take a look at Google Image FX, which is a free tool from Google. You can create high quality AI stock images that have very little problems with their hands and things like that. So in this guide, I'm going to take you through it step by step. That includes how to access Google Image Effects, how to write good prompts, how to improve results, style tags, and download your final finished products. So this is the Google Image FX home screen. At the top, you have a browser for your images. Here, this is a grid or a different display for your photos. This is the prompt box where you type your prompt. This button here is a randomization button, which will create a random uh, photo. Down here, you have your tokens. So things like 35 millimeter, minimal, sketchy, handmade. And if you click that button, you can get a list of more randomized tokens. So this is the seed. So if you unlock this, it'll mean that your photos will have more variety. In this section down here, so you can just got one option and that's for best quality. And here you have your aspect ratio, so you can choose different formats. And this one, for example, is if you want it to be on social. And one thing to note with Google Image FX and also quite a few of Google's products is they occasionally update it. So before there were some edit features which they've removed. So maybe we'll see some new things popping up in future. So let's try a prompt that's more descriptive. In this one, we say a professional looking photograph of a young woman using a laptop in a cozy cafe with warm lighting and a blurred background. Let's see what it comes up with. So we have some quite good results. We actually have two matching people. That's quite unusual. Sometimes it will do images that have two people with the same faces. So let's try a prompt that's less descriptive and see what it comes up with. So we're just using a person with a computer. So here we've got quite wild results, but it's quite interesting because you can use these for different scenarios. Maybe if you're build, building like an image bank, these will come in really useful. So let's try a classic stock photo prompt, a clean image of a smiling businessman in a modern office standing beside a whiteboard with graphs. And we won't include any tags in this one. The reason you don't include any tags is because it will produce a more neutral stock photo. If you're making something more creative, then you can use the tokens or the tags. Wow, look at this. So it's even created two people the same. So you've got an option of the different uh, poses. So let's try some more. Let's try a portrait version to see what that gives us. Look at that. So that's pretty good. The results are very close to the prompt that we gave it. Let's try this prompt, a colorful, playful image of two children reading a book together in a classroom with alphabet posters. And let's set it to landscape. So if you look here, you can see that there might be some glitches in the text. So for example, here, if you look at the front of the book, it's got a nonsense text. So what I usually do is take that into Photoshop and you can use the Photoshop AI generate tool just to mask that out and remove the error. Let's try a different prompt. So we're going to try an illustration of an old map of England to see what that gives us. So as you can see, the results are pretty good. And with a little bit of fixing up in Photoshop, you can make these look great. Google Image FX is always quite good because it doesn't make mistakes with the faces and the hands. They don't like uh, bend and things like that. And it's also quite good for different nationalities. So I think when they train their library, they must have taken photographs or used content of the different people from around the world. So I just tried a prompt here that's uh, using a Japanese and a, I put Kenya, but it should be Kenyan man uh, smiling in an office. And the results have come out pretty good. For me, this person looks Japanese and this guy looks kind of Kenyan to me. And the background is really great. And it feels like they're in a, in a business environment. And it's, it's something that you could put on a website. And I don't think many people would, would uh, be able to tell that it's actually uh, created using um, AI. So Google Image FX is really great if you want to make just simple prompts that you can use on your website or your blog. Like for example here, I just put in a British man playing soccer. He's angry. So here I put in another prompt, a doctor break dancing in a hospital. It's probably not something you see every day, but it's done a really good job. Look, so here we have the main doctor dancing. He's not break dancing, but maybe he's getting ready to do it. And people are in the background, they're blurred and they're looking pretty happy that he's about to start. This one, this one's great. Yeah, he's about to uh, to really 
show you something Im impressive. He's about to break his ankle maybe. In this, I put a prompt, a lion kissing a tiger in Times Square close up. And uh, it's quite good for doing things like close up and far away. So here I put a jellyfish in a tank in a restaurant. And this quality is incredible. There's the detail in the background and the, the way that the jellyfish is inside the tank and the colors, the bubbles. It's really great. It's amazing. It's probably the best tool I've ever used for AI images. So there's another prompt that I've used, a photo of a gorilla listening to music in the jungle. And for me, these are really great. The detail on the fur and the face is amazing. And it doesn't often make mistakes. So this is the reason I think it's really good. So here's a close up of the gorilla. And on the earphone, you can see that there's some text and it's not looking so good. So you can just take that into Photoshop and use the generative fill just to get rid of that. And that will make the photo look much better. If you want to download your photo, you can just click this button and it will download. Here you can copy and here you can bookmark it and it'll save it to your favorites. And um, this button here, just you can copy a, a shareable link or you can flag the output. For example, if you find something that's not quite right, if you flag the output, then maybe Google will check it and do something about it. Also here you have your thumb up and thumb down. So if you like this, you can just click, this is good. And what it'll do is most likely is that it'll tell Google's logarithm that this photo is of good quality and they'll try to create something that's similar to that in the future. So let's try adding some tokens onto this image to see what kind of a difference it makes. So I changed the token here to make something a bit more extreme. And we have a gorilla listening to music in the jungle illustration. And you can see the results are quite different from what we had before. For example, this guy's only got half a shirt. So in those kind of cases, you can just dis disregard the images. This one's looking a bit better. There's uh, less mistakes and he's not wearing half a shirt and it looks good. Um, so in this case, I've just put a prompt saying a lady buying flowers illustration. So if you have um, something you need for like a flower store or something like that, then you can use this prompt to create some really great illustrations. I look at this one, this one's uh, really interesting. So sometimes with images like this, if you create one which you really like, it's quite difficult to recreate the exact photo again. But what you can do is take that image into ChatGPT and ask ChatGPT to describe the image, and then it will give you a prompt. And then you can put that prompt back into ImageFX and it'll create something that looks quite similar. So you might be wondering how you can get to the history page. All you need to do is to click on the little icon that's your username. And then here you can click my library and here it will show you a history of all the photos that you made. And if you flip the card, then you can actually copy the prompt and you can see the seed number that was used. So many of you are probably wondering how to get to Google image FX. All you need to do is to go to this URL in your browser, press enter. Here we are, Google image FX. Google image FX is a powerful tool but it does also have its limitations. The tool is overall pretty good, but occasionally it might have a few issues with hands or text. The tool might also not be able to deal with things that are too complicated. Also, there are some guidelines to consider. Don't use prompts that are too violent or use people's real names or are too explicit. And don't use the tool to create harmful or misleading imagery. Google's often strict about making photos that include celebrities. So you should probably avoid those. Always review Google's terms and conditions before using this AI generated content commercially.